Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another brand new Mattel Jurassic World figure to take a look at, another Dino Trackers release. We have the Ornithochiris, and this is one that I actually was very worried about at one point because the previous wave had come out, and uh, when the previous wave came out, I assumed this figure was going to be with it, and when it wasn't, I was almost a little bit shocked, a little bit concerned, thinking that maybe the figure was cancelled or something and nobody told us. Luckily, it was just just a little bit of paranoia on my part, especially considering how Mattel has kind of been working over the last few years where they just cancel things without telling us. So I was definitely a little bit concerned, but luckily the figure did release. It is now starting to hit shelves at Walmart. You can see the packaging is pretty much as it always is when it comes to the danger packs. You've got the Pterosaur right here on the front and again the Dino Trackers logo. We've also got the Jurassic World logo right there. And then of course Velociraptor Blue and Beta up here on the side. And then if you look here on the back, you can see the figures that are actually in this wave, which is exactly how I thought this wave was going to go when the last wave came out, which is the Pyro Raptor that has that very cool macaw look. You've also got the Borealo Pelta, as well as the new version of the Velociraptor in this line and the Ornithochiris, who we are about to take a look at. So let's pop the box open and check it out. So here is our Ornithochiris, and I'm really wondering... Yeah, we can get in kind of a standing position. That's pretty cool. So I do like that. And you can see, again, the figure looks really nice. Like, the sculpt is great, of course. There's definitely a lot of uh, really nice details. Some nice uh, areas here in the wings, specifically, that I'm picking up on that have kind of, like, slight, you know, tears in the skin of the wing, which I think is a very nice realistic aspect that they added to the figure. But overall, I also am a pretty big fan of the paint apps on this one. I think the paint application and paint scheme is really well done so definitely another super cool pterosaur i feel like mattel honestly has been knocking it out of the park when it comes to their pterosaurs and this looks to be another really nice one so let's jump to that closer look right now so starting up here at the head sculpt of our Ornithochiris, you can see we've got some really nice, really flashy coloration, especially up here in the beak of the pterosaur. You can see we have a very nice, very dark gray tone for the beak. And we have this really cool reddish tone that runs along the upper part of the beak and then out and kind of like designs down. And it looks really cool, definitely highlights the beak in a beautiful way. We also have a similar reddish tone here that kind of circles around the eye. And then you have a nice yellow for the eye and a black pupil everything seems to be placed pretty nicely and the entire area of the eye as well as the beak has a kind of a satin shine to it now i will say the eye is definitely a little bit shinier and the red around the eye is definitely really really quite glossy and the beak honestly is like that perfect satin appearance to it so like you would see on a real beak you or at least you would think you would and uh, again i really like that aspect of the figure just really impressive you can see the nostrils right there the jaw does articulate of course works really nicely we've got a nicely sculpted tongue there on the inside of the mouth very nice tone of color in there the coloration unfortunately doesn't run here onto the upper side of the beak but we do have that running here along the lower part of the beak and that looks really nice overall and again that jaw can go pretty wide and also works very nicely as you move up here into the top of the head you can see some nice picno fibers there on the back of the head along with much finer picno fibers here running through the course of the body we can see that we have a grayish tone a very light gray for the body color kind of like the primary body color and there's also a speckling that picks up here you can see running through the course of the body and then you can see the throat here on the underside of the pterosaur some scruffier picno fibers there as you lead back into the chest region before that tapers off actually and then we have a skin textured look to that area but you can see we have articulation in the neck so you can get the head down and then you can also move the head up pretty high so very nice articulation very smooth yet again as far as that area goes and then as you lead here to the back of the pterosaur you can see quite a bit of variation again to those picno fibers you have kind of finer picno fibers here much scruffier bigger picno fibers there running along the back but that yet again just like we saw on the underside kind of tapers off and we have a skin textured look here moving out into the tail of the pterosaur we continue to only have those grayish tones here on the back all the way out onto the tail but yet again you can see the speckling that is quite abundant through the course of the figure 
as you move out here into the wing, you can see we have this really nice dark tone that kind of like designs in, but overtakes a large portion of the wing before we transition to this super cool yellowish tone out here toward the tip. And you can see how that kind of battles back and forth there with that darker tone. You can also see like some slits and injuries and stuff and just really nice areas of realism here as you move through the course of the wing. I think that was a beautiful touch, a very realistic touch on the part of Mattel and the actual texturing to the area here. The skin of the wing looks really good and you can also see the arm itself is also very nicely sculpted and the hand as well and you can see that the fingernails are unpainted unfortunately. It would have been nice to have a little bit of paint on those areas but I don't really expect that honestly. As you move here to the underside you can yet again see the skin texture of the underside of the stomach and chest and everything looks really good. You can kind of make out the bottom of the rib cage there. As you move out into the wing unfortunately there's no coloration here on the underside except for the primary gray body color but you can see that that speckling is pretty abundant here on the underside of the wings and then as you move down into the legs the legs look really nice you've got some nice muscle definition nice texturing and again the nails are sculpted out here the toes are nicely sculpted out no nail paint yet again unfortunately for that area you do have articulation in the legs but the legs move together you can see even though i'm pushing the one up the other one is kind of like at the max point unless you really shove it up there where it articulates but they do articulate together and they articulate pretty nicely and then of course you also have the wings which you can move each wing independently freely and you can see it can swivel and also go up and down and stuff well you went to that reverse so up and then down so you have nice articulation there and then we also have the Jurassic Facts app code if you would like to add this figure to your collection. But honestly, this is a really, really nice looking pterosaur on the part of Mattel. I would say probably one of my favorites, though each and every pterosaur that seems to come out anymore is just really well done. So definitely another awesome one to add to the collection. As far as a size goes for a length, as far as the wingspan, you are looking at about eight and a quarter inches or around 21 centimeters. And then for a length on the body, about a little over five and a half inches or about 14 centimeters, maybe a little over that. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Danger Pack Ornithochirus. But this is another one of those figures where I really don't think we need many comparisons because considering it is a Danger Pack, you obviously already have a pretty good idea of the fact that it's a smaller figure and will fit right there in the same similar size range as what you usually get when it comes to a Pterosaur in the Danger Pack line but these figures are the ones that we usually bring in for comparisons at the very least so i definitely wanted to bring these guys in and then for another comparison here next to a pterosaur in the same uh range of figures in the danger packs we have the tupendactylus next to the ornithochirus and you can see pretty similar in size maybe a little bit more body mass in the tupendactylus but similar in size overall and if you actually kind of bring them here and then put them next to each other you can definitely see that again so if you happen to have the tupendactylus or any of your average you know smaller pteranodon figures from mattel you're going to have a pretty good idea already of the size of the ornithochirus so this brand new mattel jurassic world danger pack ornithochirus is another super cool pterosaur figure and definitely another one that i highly recommend picking up i've been loving the pterosaurs from mattel and i really hope they continue to pump them out because there are so many species of pterosaur that have not been entered into the Mattel line and I feel like even though we've had quite a few the pterosaurs are something that I feel like should be pretty popular because I really don't see them very often on shelves and uh, you know there's so many out there that Mattel could make that they should capitalize on creating some more species especially considering they always do such a great job on them and again this ornithochirus is really nicely done you've got a gorgeous very highly detailed sculpt through the whole course of the body you've got some nice picno fibers you've also got some skin textured areas everything as far as that goes is very realistic and very highly detailed you can also see the detailing in the beak looks really good as does the wings and specifically the flaps of skin on the wings looks 
great because they have those nice little injuries and splits and stuff in the wings and I think that is awesome just a really really nice touch on the part of Mattel adding a nice dose of realism to the figure the paint application and paint scheme as well is really well done and for the most part gives the figure almost an entirely painted feel the only thing I feel like they needed would have been nail paint and uh, overall I would have been super happy with the paint job of this and uh, that being said I am actually still really quite happy with the paint job of it it's nice naturalistic but at the same time has nice elements of flashiness especially in the beak but also with those yellow tones on the tips of the wings so the paint application looks great as does the sculpt and you've also got some pretty fun articulation as you usually do it all works very nice and smoothly so that is also a massive plus for the figure so if you are interested in picking one up for yourself make sure you head to your local walmart and check and see if they have it in stock if they do not yet they should at some point within the next few weeks because this figure is only just now starting to trickle out i just happen to get super lucky and find one so uh again keep checking your local walmarts and they should start to show up at some point soon i hope and also like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.